Are you feeling like gaming isn't as fun as it used to be? Could it be because of the repetitive gameplay? Doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again. Toxic randos. Oh my god. What are you guys doing, Heaven? How are you tossing that? It's one guy. Bro. Are you guys serious? <laughs> or the games you play provide you no real challenge nowadays? In this video, we're gonna go through some strategies I've used myself that will help ignite that passion you once had with gaming. This video will be a reminder for me, and this will be for those who are currently struggling with this. Let's hop straight into it. I'm gonna keep it short since I won't be able to list all the games I played, but I grew up playing a variety of games starting from Pokemon Yellow and the Game Boy Advance, and Tekken 3 on the PS1, and GTA San Andreas on the PS2 when I was a wee little boy. Fast forward years later, I've been primarily playing shooter games and open road AAA games, ranging from Call of Duty, Destiny, Battlefield, Assassin's Creed, etc. Since then, I've ventured to other genres because I was just feeling a little burnt out. This one's pretty straightforward. If you're one of those gamers who only play one specific genre, you can try looking at something outside of that. You never know, you might end up liking a game just because you tried it out for yourself. I played games in the survival crafting genre such as Raft, Sons of the Forest, Stardew Valley, and a lot more. I thought games in that genre wasn't gonna hit me the same way the games I played in my genre did. But once I finally tried it out, I ended up sinking hours into it without even knowing. Maybe you just need to play a chill game to just vibe out once in a while, or games that tell compelling stories to change things up a bit. Some of these indie games got heart and soul put into them that you just don't see much of any of that in AAA games nowadays. So yeah, you can try looking out for them. There's a whole lot of bangers out there and the best thing is they ain't even that pricey. Or you can try looking through websites like cdkeys.com and look for games that pique your interest for better prices. I'm not sponsored by the way, I just like using the site sometimes. Aight. This one's more for single player PC players, but if you're having an experience where you're thinking to yourself like, bro, I used to enjoy the hell out of this, and all of a sudden you got no dry to play it because it'd be feeling kind of dry. This one's pretty obvious, but you can try downloading some mods to enhance your experience. As an example, recently watching the Fallout TV show gave me this itch to replay Fallout 4. Yeah, but I was kind of dreading it at the same time because I was like, ain't no way I'm gonna play this in vanilla. Mostly because there was things like the limited weight space. That shit was annoying as hell, bruh. Made it feel very tedious to manage your inventory. So I was like, aight, let me search up some mods for that real quick. And oh yeah, the character models. Woo. Ugly as a motherfucker. What y'all say about me? What huh? So I was like, bet, let me look for some character mods too then. You want the game to have a certain look or vibe to it? Or even make it look better? You can search up some graphics mods. It just gives you a whole new experience when you want to replay something. And if you're playing a game for the first time, mods can really help amplify your first time experience with the game. So I recommend that shit. For the competitive multiplayer gamers that play games like Valorant, Fortnite, CSGO or League, etc. And you feel stressed and feel like you got no energy to play, you can try to look for people to play with or just play with your friends. If you prefer to play solo, you might just skip this one honestly, it's a hit or miss. I used to be the tight to solo queue a lot, and I still do, cause I'm just like that. But it does get boring sometimes, especially in battle royale games. Cause damn, sometimes it'd be a walking simulator up in this bit. And at times, it can even be frustrating cause you can get queued up with some randos you don't really vibe with. Jet. Yes bro? I kill your family bro. I kill your real family bro. You don't deserve to win, you know? People like this exist? What the fuck? So yeah, playing with a group of friends can help enhance your multiplayer experience because it's gonna balance the fun and competitive aspect of it. Your guys' energy can siphon off from each other, especially if the vibes are good and you guys aren't taking it too serious. Everybody get up. Let's go! Wait for me, wait for me. Double <laughs> Sounds good. Got him! What the fuck? Pickaxe! 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 We just vibing, you know? But for people who prefer the solo queue like myself sometimes, I salute you, bro. It's tough out here, but we pull through eventually. Maybe you're one of those people who are like, damn, there ain't much to do in this game no more. 
Let's say for this one, as an example, you just finished playing a single player game like God of War. I don't know, it was just on the top of my head. Amazing game, by the way. But yeah, you played through everything the game had to offer and you're planning to play it again at some point, but you're unsure if you should. You might want to try setting a goal for yourself. It could be something simple like trying to get a platinum trophy for the game. But if I already got a plat for that game though, then you can maybe go through your backlog of games because I guarantee you got one of those. Oh my god. Come on bro, I know you've been adding them summer sales games in your cart. Maybe you might want to go back, revisit, and try to get the platinum for some of those games. You never know, you might just enjoy trophy hunting and you'll finally be able to play games you haven't touched in your backlog. It gives you this nice warm feeling of accomplishment. I've used this method a bunch of times to give me that spark to start up games I've never touched in my library before or games I might want to revisit. This method, that's the one right there. Try it for yourself and see if it works out for you. Yeah! If you're playing a competitive game though, you can try setting a goal like trying to reach a specific rank. And that will be your main driving force to keep you engaged. So remember when I mentioned I grew up playing Tekken 3? I fell in and out of the fighting game genre. I don't know why exactly. But it just happens. But I've always been into the fighting game scene. Long story short, Tekken 8 and Mortal Kombat came out. Tried out ranked. I reached orange ranks with Jin, which is my main in the game. And master ranks with Raiden in Mortal Kombat 1. I know I'm not the best, but still, it's a huge feat for me since I'm not an avid fighting game player. The fighting game genre is hard to get into, especially when you don't know the little intricate details of frame data and what moves to use and not use against certain characters. But the learning process and seeing yourself improve is what made it really fun for me. Even when I got my ass whooped a bunch of times. My advice would be to never stop being a student. There's always something to learn and improve on. Having a sense of progression will propel you to find ways to keep improving. And in the long term, make the game more fun and engaging. You can also set challenges for yourself as well finding games feeling a little too easy. If you're into speed runs, you can try to see how far you can go with your time trials and see how you stack up against other speedrunners. If you're into that kind of stuff. Let's use another example though. Pokemon Nuzlocke challenges. So what's a Nuzlocke challenge? That's when you basically have to box any Pokemon that fainted in your party permanently and you're limited to what you can catch. But we all know Pokemon games are light work if you play it the regular way, let's be for real. As we play, we get a better understanding of the mechanics, hence making it very easy. You see these experienced veteran players that play countless hours of these Pokemon games and they just never seem to get tired of it because the challenges they set up for themselves gives them that fresh high stake feeling, forcing them to improvise and adapt to any situation. So setting up a challenge for yourself can be a good way to spice things up a bit to keep the games you're playing fresh and exciting. This one's going to be very important. So in my experience, I'm guilty of playing through games as quickly as possible and trying to squeeze as much time as I can to play due to my busy schedule which led me to burning out very quickly. I didn't really notice how that was affecting me at the time. It started to feel more like a chore after a while and the feeling of trying to crunch as much time as I could to play a game wasn't worth it. I was constantly fighting with time rather than being in the present moment like I used to. It was taking all the fun away I used to have. My mistake was neglecting the balance of time management between my priorities and gaming. If gaming ever starts to feel like a chore for you, forcing yourself to feel enjoyment is only gonna hurt you more than help. I learned that shit the hard way. That shit was ass, bro. You're basically trying to chase a high that you want to feel again but just can't. Most of us just gotta accept the fact that we can't crank out hours of gaming sessions like we used to because we went and grew up and got our own set of responsibilities. Video games to many of us are our means to escape reality, provide immersive experiences, and to challenge our skills but you're gonna have to ask yourself is this game worth my time and energy am i even having fun am i in the right mental state to play this if not you gotta drop that game immediately bruh it's time to take a break you remember a time when you feel like you weren't performing at your best at a game because you felt off that day and when you finally got a chance to play after a while you just entered that flow state and you're opening up a big fat can of whoop ass to your opponents 
it's the same principle here. It's okay to walk away and take a break to focus on your mental health, then come back whenever you're ready. You can apply this to other hobbies as well. It doesn't have to be just gaming, but yeah, find something that makes you happy, whether that be going to the gym, listening to music, reading books, watching your favorite shows, whatever you like doing in your free time. Sometimes all we need is a mental reset. Reflect on how you could better balance your time with gaming and your lifestyle. After a good break and you decide to step into the world of gaming once again, I suggest you to take things slow this time, live in the present moment, and you'll have a fresh new perspective on how you see games and you'll start to appreciate the little details in this immersive art form that once got you hooked once again. I promise you that, bro. Like I said, this one is important. So just to quickly recap on how to keep gaming fun, you can try to explore different genres. You can try to customize your gaming experience with mods or in a competitive setting, you can play with a group of friends to enhance your experience. Set goals or challenges for yourself to keep a game feeling new and interesting. Take things slow when you play games to avoid feeling burnt out and it's okay to take a break from games once in a while and focus on your mental health. I hope I helped some of you guys out with these steps because it definitely helped me myself. You can try out what works for you because everyone's different. Remember gaming should be fun and not stressful or frustrating because we just out here to have a good time. That's about it for me though. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.